All right, man, let's get into, uh, let's get into rent collections. So, uh, you know, uh, another anonymous attendee had the first question of, of the day, which was how is COVID impacting rent collections now and in the future? I think it's, I think it's time to get into that. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, I was really confident as far as housing prices not going down, although I was a little bit skittish about going live on social and all that good stuff. <laughs> it's a little bit, little bit skittish when you're the only person out there saying it. Um, but, that, but I really believe that housing prices were not going to go down. When it came to rents, I was also really confident that compared to other asset classes that this housing asset class was going to perform better. Now, Part of that was because I looked at other asset classes around seeing an incredible amount of variability. I mean, the stock market lost 26% of its value in four trading days. Uh, of course, it has since recovered, but just that up and down um, with investors wealth being really hung in the balance. I saw a real, a real challenge there. I saw bond yields going way down. So I felt really confident that our asset class, especially over time, was going to be a better decision for of where to put your money. So, so that was the case. But at the same time, I was realistic. And I, I didn't know exactly how the stimulus packages would come. And uh, I think that was a big impact on how we were going to be able to collect rents in a COVID world. And so what I prepared clients, as I said, you know, I would expect a short term temporary loss of rental income. As it has turned out, um, that was a very conservative approach uh, for me which is kind of goes along with who I am I'm proud. Uh, and rents have been incredibly strong, well beyond the expectations of myself, my business partners, and really other movers and shakers in the single family rental investing space. Um, single, there hasn't been an asset class that has benefited more and remain more consistent than single family rents, specifically in a market like Jacksonville in the Southeast where people are migrating to. Um, and so, yeah, so it's great that you pulled this, this stat up here, uh, Pablo. We're kind of looking at rent collection numbers and what I wanted to do is to show not just the overall yearly um, rent collection percentage I wanted to show sort of a baseline of where we were in 2019 prior to COVID and then now since we've been dealing with COVID for nine months now show really where we are in 2020 to try to zero in on what the COVID effect has been for JWB and um, as you can see quarter over quarter um, we're slightly below where we were in 2019 but not all that much, right? In quarter one, we were the closest, right? In quarter one of 2019, we collected 99% of rents. In quarter one of 2020, it was 98.6%. So you'd say, well, the vast majority of that was prior to COVID, and that makes sense. In the heart of the COVID time, when there was a lot of unknowns and the stimulus still wasn't passed, um, that was Q2. And uh, our rent collection in 2019 was 99%. If you look to 2020, it dropped, but not all that much. It dropped to 97.8% for Q2. Um, and it has continued to get closer to what our normal percentages are in Q3. So overall for the year, the COVID effect to JWB rent collection is less than 1% off, which I think is really incredible. Again, comparing this consistency to other asset classes, just nothing compares. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, man. And and I knew, you know, we've been talking about it all year, right? So so we know that it's been performing well. It's an incredible, you know, it, it's real testament to the team of, of what they've been able to do on a portfolio level. But as we were preparing for this call, I was like, Greg, I think you got to personalize this, right? Like at the end of the day, uh, Anonymous doesn't care about, you know, your portfolio. He cares about, she or she cares about their house, right? So we wanted to bring this down more into like a, into a micro level. Um, let's talk about that. T talk to me. Talk, yeah. Aim a little smaller. Yeah, let's do that. And let's, let's kind of, let's, let's, let's get to these slides in a second here, because okay. I don't want people to get distracted. We'll, we'll share all that information in just a second here. We've got more than enough data to back it up. But the reality is that while rent collection rents or rent collection rates are, are high, uh, much better than expected, and a small fraction below where we were last year. That doesn't mean that certain clients aren't hurting, right? We manage 3,600 homes. And so even if you're talking about a small fraction of rent collection being lower, that translates into tens of thousands of dollars that really affects uh, our clients. And so I want to make sure that people understand that this isn't perfect, right? We're, our, our standard, our expectation for COVID was to make the best out of a completely unique scenario. 
And there are clients that have been negatively affected by COVID, right? They do have some residents. There are some residents, so we're going to show some of the information here, that haven't paid rent since COVID broke. I mean, that's just reality. And you would know that I wasn't being genuine if I said anything other than that, knowing that we manage 3,600 homes. But I think what you're going to see with the data and what we are really trying to do is to make the best situation for a, a, a client and a resident. And there's a lot that we can do to set up a better situation than most, even in this environment. So a lot of things that we can do to take a scenario where somebody's not paying rent and there's a foreclosure, more, uh, an eviction moratorium, which there is at the moment, and still work to find common ground to get that person to get onto a payment plan. Right. And so this is the reality for a very small fraction of our clientele. It's just real. It's, it's certainly not going to be perfect. That wasn't the expectation. I want to be sensitive to know that those people there, that, that is a struggle, right? For those people, as far as rent collection this year, it's a down year, right? Now, at the same time, when you came on with JWB, we expected that we were going to have down years every once in a while. And the, the other years, non-COVID year for this will balance this out. And I have no concern over their long-term performance, but I just wanted to make sure that people knew that it's not all roses. And I want to be sensitive to those folks who are, who are hurting right now. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and Miguel Angel Sanudo, who joins us here on a weekly basis, he, he is one of those cases, right? He says two of his houses has had uh, no, no rent collection. So, you know, he's struggling. Miguel Angel, you know, like, hopefully, maybe you can put in the chat how, how prepared you were for this. Like, did you have the the reserves, uh, any, anything like that. We'd love to shed some light on that experience. Um, but Greg, you said that there's a couple different ways to mitigate the, the pain for, yeah. the, for the renter, for, for the investor. Let's go to the, the graph where we're showing the real numbers of how many people, let's call, are hurting, right? So out of all of the percentage of, of homes that we manage, how many are struggling at the moment? And when I say struggling, I would mean um, enduring an eviction, at this time, or something that's called a stipulation agreement, which we'll get into in just a second as well. Um, but when I ran the numbers, I wanted to do something to give more people just an understanding of really where it is as far as numbers and, and the not so rosy details, right? I looked at the number of homes that we have under management that have active leases on them, and I wanted to see how many are not current on their payments at the moment. 97.2% of all of our residents are current at this time. There's 1.2% of the portfolio that is in an eviction at this time. Now, everybody who's not current has already been started with filing an eviction. So there's nothing in between there. So you've got 1.2% that of an eviction filed. And then you have another 1.6% out of the portfolio that had an eviction filed. But just like you were talking about, Pablo, an additional step that JWB does to make this the best situation we can is we entered into what's called a stipulation agreement. Stipulation agreement is basically a payment plan that is sanctioned by the court. And so what happens here is the eviction is actually filed, but we're working with that resident and with the court to set up a payment plan. And as long as the resident takes care of that payment plan on the agreed, amount, agreed upon amount of time, then the eviction is halted, which is great. That's what we want. We want that resident to continue that payment plan to pay everything back, including any fees that were incurred by the owner. And we want them to get back to a great place. So you can see here that 1.6% of our portfolio is in a stipulation agreement. All in all, the real numbers on this comes out to about 95, 95 residents that are either in an eviction or a stipulation agreement. There's uh, 40, let's see, 41 uh, that are in an eviction, 54 that are in a stipulation agreement. And we look very positively on stipulation agreements. That's a good sign. Um, and out of 30, roughly 3,466 active leases, that, um, that's, kind of, that's kind of where we're at. A very small section of the pie has payment challenges at this moment. Okay, so that's, that's the full pie. There's two, you know, two buckets, you know, two, there's three slices of that pie, right? Like there's a slice that hasn't been cut out, right? Like the pie. And then the, and then, the, then there's two pain slices, right? So like, let's dive into the pain slices. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's do it. So this is great. So I'm really trying to see those clients 
how many clients are really having a dramatic impact and loss of rental income that isn't easily overcome, let's say over the course of another year of great payments and all that good stuff. The way we look at that is if there's $3,000 that's owed because of uh, the, the payment plan, uh, really, or if there was an eviction that is many months old, right? That $3,000 number internally is kind of what we look at. What we're seeing here with this pay, the stipulation agreements, again, the payment plans is out of those 54 people that are on those payment plans that some have been on since COVID broke, uh, 48 of those are what we call lower dollar value plans. They owe $3,000 or less on their payment plan. And again, that includes rent as well as any eviction fees that they incurred to do that. So you're talking about, generally speaking, two months of rent, maybe plus some fees, is what people have been behind. And that's 48 out of the 54 total payment plans or stipulations. So when I saw that number, you know, that, that tells me that people are in really good striking distance of recovering from the short-term temporary loss of rental income, which is what, what we started out saying.